All right, so you've seen me swoon over the benchmark tests and my own performance measurements of the M1 on this channel. But after using the M1 for two weeks, I have a few conclusions I'd like to go over as they relate to developers and from what I gathered by testing it against my Intel MacBook Pro 16 inch that I bought last year. So firstly, as I mentioned in my videos prior, not bad Apple, not bad at all. Being that this is the first generation and a huge gutsy move on their part um, wait, courageous, I believe, is the word they prefer, right? I really give them props for moving the industry forward in this matter. This will really give other chip makers a little push that they desperately need to get things rolling along in the right direction, which is to make better and faster processors for us. But wait a minute, before you write me off as an Apple fanboy, just let me say that I come from a long line of dedicated PC users. My dad was a PC user, my grandfather was a PC user, my great-grandfather was a PC user, my great-grandfather before him, and I've just been using a Mac for the past few years because I needed to do iOS development. So Apple sort of boxed me in a corner with my first MacBook Pro purchase a few years ago. But instead of being mad at Apple and their closed ecosystem, I learned that there are some benefits to their hardware. Now, do I recommend you go out and buy a new M1 chip Mac? to do development work. In some cases, yes, and in other cases, no. And here's what I mean. There are currently two camps of folks watching my videos here and doing research on the M1, wondering should they get the M1 or not, wondering if their work will be more productive on the new machines. I think of people in camp one are folks that either don't have a Mac or have a very old Mac. People in camp two already have a pretty decent Mac that's a year or two old or three, and they're still doing some research just to if they should upgrade. And I have different recommendations depending on which camp you belong to. By the way, I myself am in the second camp as I have a late 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you're in camp one and you don't have a Mac and you need one because you're doing iOS development or you don't have a laptop at all, or you're just starting out, or you wanna fit in when you're sitting at a coffee shop in 2021, fingers crossed, getting a MacBook Air or a Mac mini with the M1 chip is a really good entryway into the next generation of machines that will last you for a number of years and won't break your wallet. You'll get a machine that performance wise is on par with the most expensive MacBook Pro from last year that are Intel based. For you folks, I recommend you buy one. If you need portability, get the MacBook Air or the Pro. If you don't care about portability and already have a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse at home, then save some money and a few hundred dollars and get the Mac Mini, which performs exactly the same way as the MacBook Pro M1 and the MacBook Air M1. You'll get a brand new top performing machine that lasts a few years and because Macs tend to retain their value for a long time, you'll recoup a lot of that cost when you sell it in a couple of years. Just watch, you'll end up paying less for buying a new MacBook Air than you would for buying anything equivalent in performance that's PC based because you will recoup a lot of your costs when you sell your used Mac. But you will most likely not even be able to get even $100 or $200 for your disposable PC laptop. And this has been my experience with selling my used MacBook Pros while getting at least 50% back for them in a private market sale and over 30% when I used Apple trade-in program the last time I did it. By the way, my top of the line Lenovo W workstation is now a paperweight that I couldn't sell for $100, but I paid about $3,000 for when I bought it brand new. So instead of selling it for 50 bucks, I decided to keep it as a sentimental paperweight. I turn it on once in a while, just to look at this beautiful Windows 7 desktop that I've missed so much. And then I turn it off again and get back to work. Now a question I've seen a lot in the comments here is, should someone get an eight gigabyte model or a 16 gigabyte model of the new M1 Mac if they were to buy one. I'd say get as much RAM as you possibly can, even if you have to save up for an extra month or two. Eight gigabytes will work for you for web development, and that's fine. But if you're going to do any kind of um, heavy intensive stuff, any memory intensive stuff, clearly, right? If you're doing data science or mobile development, you'll already be far behind if you buy a brand new eight gigabyte model. So go for the 16 gigabytes at least. All right, so that's camp one. Now, if you're in camp two, like me, and you already have a relatively recent Mac machine with decent specs, then my recommendation is to skip the M1. 
As you've seen in my tests here, the M1 performs relatively on par with my 16 inch i9 Intel MacBook Pro in general. Sure, some things it does much better, but in some things it does worse. And there are some tasks that I ran here where it completely destroyed the top MacBook Pro from last year in performance. This one did finish faster, the MacBook Air, and it started up the application. There we go. MacBook Pro is still catching up. Overall though, it's probably not worth it for you to go and upgrade, and you can wait a year until the MX comes out or the M2, whatever they're gonna call it. The leaks and speculations have already begun, right? Now I did buy the Mac MacBook Air and the Mac Mini. Will I be switching now that I have the MacBook M1? The answer is no, I will not be switching. I will keep using my MacBook Pro 16 inch until at least a year from now when the MacBook Pros start getting the M1 chips and all the software vendors have caught up with the ARM architecture support. And it does look like vendors and open source projects are doing a fairly good job releasing new builds pretty quickly to support those chips. For example, show me a machine that's as stable as versatile and as well built that is not a Mac and I will switch. So anyway, even though I'm not a fanboy of Apple, I do want to congratulate Apple on this one. And thanks for keeping everyone on their toes. These kinds of leaps keep our technology moving forward. And once everybody stops crying, productivity gains are worth it in the long run, in my opinion. Anyway, those are my thoughts after two or three weeks and the new M1 machines. Thank you so much for watching and for following this story. And if you want to learn more about the M1, leave me comments down below and maybe I'll do some more videos about that. Really appreciate you. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and I will see you around.